Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the city of Greensboro. The Greensboro Fire Department deployed 42 members of its Swift Water Team, Search and Rescue Team, and Incident Management Team. This is in response to a request from North Carolina's Emergency Operations Center to assist with anticipated flooding and search and rescue efforts in eastern North Carolina due to Hurricane Dorian. The firefighters take a variety of rescue and support equipment to assist people from flooded homes, damaged structures, and people stranded by by floodwaters in precarious locations. The team of firefighters traveled to the Eastern Branch located in Kinston on September 3rd and plan to be deployed for 7 to 10 days. The polls are open for participatory budgeting. Residents ages 14 and older can help decide how to spend $500,000 of the city's budget. PB Greensboro is a democratic process allowing residents to decide how to spend tax dollars on projects or programs within their city council district. This year, for the first time, residents will be able to vote online until October 31st. Online voting will be available in English and Spanish. Paper ballots will be available in Spanish, Arabic, and French at in-person voting locations or at the Greensboro Budget Office located at City Hall. Staff is available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. If you don't want to vote online, you can vote in person at one of the following locations. Voting is open from September 12th through October 14th at Benjamin Branch Library, Windsor Recreation Center, Leonard Recreation Center, and Central Library. For more information about PB Greensboro, visit the PB website. The Greensboro Youth Council, or GYC, will host an open house and new member interest meeting on Thursday, September 12th, from 5.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. at the Greensboro Cultural Center. During the event, there will be information tables promoting GYC projects and programs. There will be an interest meeting beginning at 6 p.m. for prospective new volunteers. During the meeting, teens will learn about membership and available service learning opportunities. A separate parent session will also take place at 6 p.m. GYC is a membership-based volunteer organization for Guilford County High School students. Teens earn service learning hours for their participation and have the opportunity to develop leadership skills while having fun. The Greensboro Cultural Center is located at 200 North Davie Street. For more information about the Greensboro Youth Council, call 336-373-2738 or visit the GYC website. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. Hello, my name is Jennifer Pa, and I'm a physical therapist at Cone Health Outpatient Rehabilitation. I'm here today to talk to you about exercises you can do to improve your mobility and ease the stiff, achy joints that you might have. Whether it's your knees, your back, or your shoulders, there's always an exercise you can do that's simple and effective, that's low impact, and you don't need any equipment at all. So let's go ahead and get started. This is my friend Kendra, and she's here to help us do some of these exercises and demonstrate how it's done. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, what we're going to start with today is a little bit of a light warm-up, okay? So she's going to start by marching in place, nice and easy. Now, if you've already been moving around your house, um, that's great. You can go ahead and take a walk to the mailbox or just make sure you're doing something to get your blood flowing before you start some of these exercises. Okay, and as you get going, after the first minute or so, you can start to add your upper body. So you can either pump your arms a little bit more, or if you feel a little tense in your upper body, you can also add some shoulder rolls, okay? So you wanna just warm up the joints and just kinda get the blood flowing, get your heart rate up a little bit, okay? Like I said, maybe a minute or two before you start some of these exercises. 
And now, another exercise which is going to work on your leg muscles, okay? So this is a, a sit to stand exercise. What you want to make sure is that you have a nice firm chair so that you've got um, a good solid place to stand from. A sofa might be too challenging. So she's got armrests here. She's going to try to sit down without using her hands, okay? So reaching her arms out in front, she sends her hips back and lowers down. Now, I want you to try this to try to see if you can stand up and sit down without using your hands. Okay, she'll do this maybe five to ten times. Now, if you need your hands, you can definitely do that, but that is a good way to tell if you're getting stronger. So your thigh muscles are getting a little bit stronger. On her next one, she's going to start to raise her arms up. So she's going to lower down and then up with her arms up overhead. So that just gets a good full body exercise. Um, she doesn't have to raise her arms all the way up overhead, but just getting the upper body involved is a really good thing. Notice that her knees are tracking right over her second toe. She's got great form, her hips are going back, her back is nice and straight. From there, we're going to start to add in some more dynamic exercises. So she's going to do kind of a similar to the warm up. Her knees are going to come up. So this is called a knee pull down. Arms start up. She's going to bring her hands down towards her knees. Good. Just getting a little bit more intensity going. So she's working on her upper body, her core, and her lower body. Now, again, if your arms can't get up that high or if this is too challenging, you can definitely do it with a lower intensity or even in sitting. You can march your knees if that was too difficult. Okay. Now what she's going to do is add a little bit of trunk rotation. So here's that core working again, going across the body, pulling her knees up towards her chest. And she has great form. And really, you know, if you can do 10 going to each side, that's plenty. We're going to stretch your back out a little bit here. So stand with your feet wide apart. You're going to take one arm up overhead, reach it really tall. Now keep this hip where it is, and you're just going to round your spine over toward the other side. Good. And then come all the way back up. Again, you go into what range of motion is comfortable for you. Okay, make sure you're breathing. Once you're over, maybe take a nice deep breath into your ribs here. That should feel really, really good to a stiff back. Job. Come back up to center. Let's do that one more time to each side. Really thinking about lengthening your finger to your foot, that whole long line. That looks great. You could always do this in sitting um, if you needed to. Okay, and then back all the way up and reach up and over. You never want to bounce when you're stretching. You want to hold it for a good, um, you know, 15 to 30 seconds. With this one, probably closer to 15 seconds would be good. Okay, so what we're going to work on now is um, a little stretch that you're going to do in the seated position. Um, this is going to stretch your hamstring, so the muscle that is behind your knee. So you're going to sit nice and tall, close to the edge of your chair, and you're going to extend one leg out in front of you. Okay? What you want to do is pull your toes back to your head, make sure your knee is very, very straight, and you're just going to shift your weight forward, so hinging forward at the hip, just to get a really good stretch back here. Now, you're going to hold this about 30 seconds. You want to breathe and feel that really good stretch. Now, if you sit a lot, if you have to sit at an office chair a lot and it's hard to take breaks, um, this muscle tends to really get tight behind your knee and it can also cause some back pain. So it's a really good, effective muscle to stretch. Good. Come all the way back up and then you'll switch sides. Okay. Sitting nice and tall, just bring your chest forward, leaning forward over that knee. Now you shouldn't really feel this too much in your back. You want to always kind of ease into it. It should be felt behind the knee or even in the calf muscle. Great. And then come all the way back up. Then the last stretch we're going to do is for your back and it's called a spine twist or just a little bit of rotation. So what she's going to do is um, grab hold of the chair and you're going to stay very tall through your spine here. You're going to rotate and just kind of twist and really feel a good stretch through her rib cage. Good. And then back to center and she'll do the other side. You can use the chair to kind of help you and assist that motion. Good. Make sure you're very tall when you do this. You don't want to bend and twist. Okay. Good. And back to center. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're motivated to begin exercising and start improving your health. 
For more information about our programs or how physical therapy can improve your mobility, visit conehealth.com slash physical therapy. I'm Jennifer Pa. Technology is taking downtown Greensboro by storm in an interactive way. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Downtown Greensboro is setting the backdrop for the latest smart city initiative being introduced by the city of Greensboro. Mayor Nancy Vaughn and members of the Greensboro City Council gathered at Center City Park to launch the first round of city post kiosks. Smart City Media is the provider of 11 smart city kiosks being installed throughout downtown Greensboro and sponsored by Duderman Law Group. The kiosk at Center City Park was available for visitors of the North Carolina Folk Festival, showcasing the event map and schedule. The kiosks, which look like large-scale smartphones, feature timely information relating to nearby restaurants, retail, events, and public transportation. The kiosks also serve as a free Wi-Fi hotspot. Greensboro Parks and Recreation is teaming up with the Greensboro Elks Lodge to offer free adaptive golf clinics on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Lessons will take place September 14th and again on October 12th at the Gillespie Golf Course located at 306 East Florida Street. The clinics are designed to teach adaptive techniques for individuals with physical disabilities. Golf professionals will teach techniques to introduce newcomers to the game and encourage skilled players to get back in the game. Golf offers a great way to exercise and socialize. No previous golf experience is needed to participate. To register or for more information, call Gillespie Golf Course at 336-373-5852 or the city's Adaptive and Inclusive Recreation Unit at 336-373-2626. The Drama Center Booster Club invites you to take part in a family-friendly mystery game called Pirate Island. This is hosted by Mystery Men Productions on Friday, September 13th from 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. in the Stephen D. Hires Theater in the Greensboro Cultural Center. The game is best suited for kids ages 8 and older, but pirates of all ages are welcome. Pirate Island is set in the year 1763 off a small Caribbean island. Pirate ships have gathered to compete in the annual pirate games. The ship's crews compete against each other to gather the most treasure. Tickets are $20 in advance and $25 at the door. Seats can be reserved online or by calling 336-335-6426. Feel free to come in pirate attire. Costume pieces will be available. Refreshments will be provided. All proceeds benefit the Drama Center Booster Club, which provides support for the Drama Center of City Arts. The Greensboro Cultural Center is located at 200 North Davy Street. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on Jacob Durham. Jacob builds guitars for Roscoe Guitars, a fixture on North Spring Street since 1972. Roscoe Guitars manufactures premium bass guitars that are sold around the world and here in Greensboro. Models range from $2,500 to however much you're willing to spend on customization. Jacob developed his affection for the guitar when he was only six years old. His dad bought him a jumbo-sized acoustic guitar, one he could barely wrap his arms around, and he hasn't stopped playing since. The transition to crafting guitars came when a former co-worker told Jacob about a position to do electronics at Roscoe Guitars. With Roscoe's team of five, Jacob does the body shaping, wood processing, cutting, electronics, threading installations, and a host of other tasks.
To learn more about MADE in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. If you are planning to host a party during the North Carolina A&T Homecoming festivities, you might want to check with the city before sending out the invitations. Coming up after the break, we'll talk with the Inspections Department to find out what they're looking for when it comes to building occupancy. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The greatest homecoming on earth takes Greensboro by storm each year as North Carolina A&T students and alum celebrate their Aggie pride. As most homecomings go, parties are par for the course. Joining me now to tell us about the city's building occupancy codes is Will Lilly. He is a construction projects coordinator for the city's inspections department. Hello, Will. Hey, Welcome how back. You doing? Good, Good to see, see you. you. Yeah. So what do you mean by the term occupancy? The occupancy is directed by the state building code and how you occupy the building. Uh, normally for events and parties, it should be an assembly occupancy. Okay. And if property owners are not clear, how do they determine the correct occupancy for their property? They should call before they occupy the building. They should call the state fire marshal's office here, which is 373 2177 and ask for occupancy. They should be able to get that in writing to them of what it is. Then they can call our office to determine if they need to turn in plans or submit or get permits. Okay, so the first step would be just to call the city before you start yes, advertising any parties yes. or any events because, as I said, homecoming is just around the corner. What is the allowable occupancy if you want to host a homecoming party? You should be an assembly occupancy. It's called A2 is what it's called. It's an assembly occupancy. That's what you should be if you're going to have a party. Okay. And is a change of use something that people need to consider? And if so, how difficult is it to yes. obtain? It normally takes at least 15 to 20 days. And it must be submitted by a licensed architect. And, and what, what is a change of use? Well, if you had a different occupancy, let's say it was a storage warehouse, and you wanted to put an assembly use in that, you would have to have plans submitted to our office electronically and go through the complete review process. Okay, and you're saying how long that takes? It looks 15 to 20 days, okay. roughly. So with homecoming coming up quite, quite around the corner, quite readily, people need to get this underway now. Yes, the sooner the better. So if, if there are any issues, we can work those out and try to get the permits out so the work can be taking place. Normally a change of use will have some work that will correspond with it before the, you can actually occupy the building and inspections will have to take place. Okay, so you've told us what types of occupancy people should be considered as if they want to have a party, if they want to have an event, but what is the consequence if you do not call the city first, if you are not clear on your occupancy, if you don't have the change of use? What happens? Ultimately, they will shut it down. Um, they can condemn the building and they can levy fines against the people there for the of course, occupying the building illegally. Okay, is there a range of what those fines can amount to? Yes, but I would contact the fire marshal's office because it depends on how many people you have there, if you're over, if you're occupying illegally, um, but I would definitely call them for that. Okay, so basically this is an opportunity to keep residents safe. Uh, we have a lot of out-of-towners who come in for homecoming. Yes. We want to keep everyone safe. So the key is to know what your occupancy rate is for any structure that you're hoping to have some Aggie Pride Fun festivities in. Yes, that's correct. Okay, well, Will, thank you for sharing this important information about building occupancy, um, certainly in advance of homecoming. We hope folks have heard this information. We'll take heed, and we thank you for all you do thank to you. keep our Thanks residents and our community safe. Yes. Come back and let us know other things that you have going on in the inspections department. Will do. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little-known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. 
The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot make it to City Hall, we broadcast the meetings right here on GTN. The meetings held in the council chambers are also streamed live on the city's website. Meetings on the first Tuesday of the month will take place in one of the city's five council districts to allow council members to engage more residents. Those meetings will be broadcast the following Saturday at 10 a.m. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month will continue to take place on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building, located at 300 West Washington Street. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting locations, schedule, and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The City of Greensboro's campaign to help 100 renters become first-time homebuyers has more than doubled its original goal. The Neighborhood Development Department and Housing Consultants Group have helped 212 families purchase homes. In January, the city intended to reach its goal by December 31st. Amazingly, the hashtag 100 Homes campaign reached the goal seven months early. In June, the name changed to hashtag 200 homes, aimed at reaching 200 renters by the end of the year. Remarkably, the goal was reached at the beginning of August. Of the 212 homes purchased, 62 percent of the houses are in East Greensboro. According to Housing Consultants Group, this campaign resulted in $26 million of real estate purchased in Greensboro. The concept of hashtag 200 homes was inspired by tornado survivors in East Greensboro who lost their homes. Many were spending $800 a month to rent substandard housing. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hi, this is Lana. Join us for an action-packed weekend. This Friday, head over to the Triad Stage for opening night of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, starting at 8 p.m. This legendary play that shook the theater world will be performed at the Triad Stage during the month of September. Come celebrate the official unveiling and join the cast and company at the post-show party with food and drink in the lobby. To purchase tickets or for more information, go to triadstage.org. The city will host its annual 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb on Saturday to honor the 343 firefighters and 72 police officers who perished in the World Trade Center. Residents are invited to participate in the event at the Bellamede parking deck. Participants will have the option of climbing the flights of stairs nine times, which represents the approximately 73 flights of stairs, which is the equivalent of the highest floor New York Fire Department firefighters reached on 9-11. Registration begins at 7.30 a.m. For more information, visit greensboro-nc.gov. Also this Saturday, the Greensboro Library will host a One City, One Book library card sign-up day for children, teens, and families from 10 a.m. to noon at the Central Library. Come get your library card, see the Black Panther movie, and hear the actors speak Koza, one of the languages of South Africa. You can also munch in popcorn, make a scratch art African mask, and take a tour of the library. September is library card sign-up month, and we're also kicking off this year's One City, One Book campaign with Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. Visit greensboro-nc.gov for more information. Greensboro Comic Con returns this Sunday at the Greensboro Marriott downtown. Prepare for an action-packed event full of comics, cosplay, toys, gaming, and more. Featuring your favorite local creators, professional guests, and the best pop culture vendors around. For times, tickets, and additional information, visit GreensboroComicCon.com. This Sunday, bring the kids over to the Greensboro Children's Museum for Sunday Fun Day, where you can enjoy half-price Sundays. From 1 to 5 p.m., there will be $5 admission per person. The Greensboro Children's Museum is a hands-on, interactive museum for children and their families. For more information and a list of upcoming events, go to gcmuseum.com. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here in GTN to find out about more events happening on the town. Welcome back. 
The city of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. The Parks and Recreation team is operating without the Greensboro Sportsplex for the next couple of weeks. The facility is closed while the floors are being resurfaced and other maintenance projects take place. Residents can follow the progress of the renovations from the Sportsplex Facebook page or on Instagram at GSO Sportsplex. Meantime, regulars can contact the next closest recreation center for open gym times available at other locations. The goal is to reach this facility's full potential in terms of its impact on the community as well as visitors from around the state and country. Greensboro Sportsplex General Manager Trey Goddett says we're excited that in just a matter of weeks, we'll have fresh new courts for our customers to learn, play, and grow. These significant upgrades to the Sportsplex are long overdue. This marks the first time the floors will be resurfaced in 13 years. For more information about the Sportsplex, call 336-373-3272 or visit the city's website. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the coordinators of the North Carolina Folk Festival. Executive Director Amy Grossman and her right hand ZZ Barhuma worked tirelessly for the past several months to pull together another successful event in downtown Greensboro. Thank you to the star-studded list of multicultural performers, variety of vendors, army of volunteers, and city staff and sponsors. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our five-minute flash briefings. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.